Son, sit down. We're going to take a little serious approach. Growing up in 2018 was, uh, was a confusing time. You know, you don't really know about your cultural identity, and you're often left with confusing questions. You know, I think I know what you're talking about. Really? <laughs> you were just reading about cultural identity in my Korean 101 class. No way! Who's your teacher? Dr. David Choi. Man, I would do anything to hear him speak. Introducing David Choi in How to Say I Love You. Just pray for them. 
I have yet to learn the Korean American words for cognitive behavioral approaches, family therapy, fighting cultural stigma, recovery, healing. But I hope we all do so soon. Another thing that we Korean Americans don't know how to talk about openly is homosexuality. In the conservative Christian Korean American community that I grew up in in North Carolina, we didn't even have a vocabulary to begin to understand queerness. Instead, I discovered how a lot of Korean American churches viewed queer people. It was a boys and youth group with their favorite phrase, dude, that's so gay. It was a Jungdusanims that loved the sinner but hated the sin. It was a Chipsanims that thought the gays were unnatural, that they were ruining society. It was a Kwantanims that were adamant that gay Koreans didn't even exist. Homosexuality is a foreigner's disease. And of course, there were the Boksanims that said they were all going to hell. Even outside of the Korean American church, lots of Koreans and Korean Americans just had one word to say. Total woe. Filthy. A couple of years ago, on my 20th birthday, I invited my parents over for dinner near our college campus at a fancy Asian fusion restaurant. It was way too dark inside, dimly lit with paper lanterns and small candles. And everything was way overpriced. My mom, looking at the menu, kept saying she could make all this stuff at home for less than half the cost. But despite all that, we splurged and we celebrated. After we finished up our crispy kimchi potatoes and reinvented bibimbap, my parents sat across from me, holding each other's hands, smiling, content. Part of me wanted to preserve that perfect moment and pray it would last forever. But a bigger part of me knew that I couldn't go into the third decade of my life living a lie. Even though I didn't know enough Korean Americans to express everything I wanted to say, I took a deep breath and said, I have something to tell you. I'm dropping out the p -Med track. <laughs> but I'm dropping out of P-Med because I can't handle the workload. And I can't handle the workload because I'm severely depressed. And I'm severely depressed because Mama, Papa, I, I'm gay. My parents met the blows that I dealt them in the order that they could handle. The confidence in their voices dwindled as I progressed. Looking from side to side uncomfortably, they asked me in hushed tones, what are you going to do with your life if you don't go to medical school? How do you know that you're depressed? But that when they got to the fact of my queerness, all that my dad had to say with a grim look on his face as he bit back his lip was, no comment. Slowly, as time has progressed, and my understanding of my Korean American identity has grown, I'm slowly becoming more and more fluent in Korean American. I now know that the Korean American words for American dream don't translate to doctor or lawyer. I learned the meaning of the words Korean American dream from a popular Korean song called Yangwandu. The lyrics go, 행복하자, 행복하자, 아프지 말고, 아프지 말고. Let's be happy. Let's just be happy and don't be sick. Don't be sick. My parents are also growing accustomed to their gay Korean American son with a bipolar disorder, and they too are adding new words to their Korean American vocabulary, such as patsuno, partner, queer, queer, and yakchinya bogoni, have you taken your medication? Translated literally, have you eaten your medication? I have come to realize that all of these words, too, just mean the same thing. I love you.